Today I want to explain why I think Mike Trout is the greatest baseball player of our day. For those of you who are unsure of who Mike Trout is, he's the center fielder for the Anaheim Angels as well as the uh, 2014 American League MVP. And I'm sure most of you are probably thinking, why is a girl talking to us about baseball? And she probably just thinks he's cute, and in all that honesty, that's how I got my start liking him. But then I did some research, research, and um, really decided, we're not decided, um, really began to understand why he truly is a great baseball player and why he deserves to be MVP for the past couple years. Um, Just ask you guys a question. Where do you want to be when, or where did you want to be when you were 24 years old in your career? Probably making lots of money, and that probably didn't happen though. You probably just got a regular job. And um, I'm going to inform you all on how Mike Trout was able to reach his dreams at such a young age. First of all, his early start in baseball, his outstanding statistics, and his countless awards to prove his greatness. In case you're unsure of how baseball works, there are three bases, and home plate, er, sorry, home plate. So let's start with the first base of Mike Trout. was born on August 7, 1991, which makes him 24 years old, one of the youngest baseball players today. He was drafted out of high school from Millville um, Senior High School, and he was the first round pick for the Angels, which was the 25th, 25th pick of the 2009 Amateur Draft. Um, his debut game was also in July 9th, uh, or sorry, July 2nd, 2009. To round second base, we will have to go over his statistics. Um, so this obviously isn't all of them, but he's has, uh, so far he has 457 scored runs, 1,320 base, total bases, and 1,104 times on base, according to uh, baseballreference.com. In 2013, he, was the, he had the most appearances than anyone else in baseball. And that's just so why he's amazing. <laughs> Um, so, to round third base, which we're almost told is his awards, and as you can see for the past couple of years, he's stacked up quite a few, ranging from the Rookie of the Year to the Silver Slugger Award for the past three years. Um, we've officially run the bases and understanding why Mike Trout is such an incredible player, so let's take it home. Knowing Mike's background hopefully got you to like him. Learning about his stats hopefully got you to appreciate him. And learning about his awards that have been granted to him hopefully got you to respect his talent. Hopefully today I was able to fully explain why I truly believe the Mike Trout is the greatest baseball player of our day. And even though this doesn't really have to do with Mike Trout, I want to leave you guys with a quote today that uh, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. It's obviously a baseball reference, but I feel that it has to do with everybody's daily life. Um, no matter what we go through, never let it, the fear of it keep us from playing. Thank you.
So Jacob, what did you think? Um, I thought it was really good. I agree with her on the fact of I like Mike Trout way better than Bryce Harper. And I think he should have won the AL MVP instead of Donaldson last year. Um, I thought it was clever the way she did the bases to do the points. Um, I think if you could memorize a little bit more instead of read from the card, uh, that it would make it more effective. And then if you could speak a little louder, that'd be that'd be good because I was kind of like trying to hear. Um, but I think overall it was good. Um, maybe a little bit less on the visual aid. Um, but yeah, I think overall it was pretty good. All right. Well, you basically have no attention device. You start with your purpose statement, and that's not the way you want to go. I think you need to kind of move that down a little bit and start with your personal experience where you talk about, you know, a lot of people might wonder why I'd be interested in talking about baseball. You know, I'm just looking at the cute guys. Okay, that's really why I got into it in the first place. That's okay. But, you know, uh, when I got interested into it, I discovered this particular player, and so today I want to tell you this sort of thing. You just kind of have it backwards, and it, it's, it feels awkward. It sounds like, um, like I said, an oral report that somebody's giving in their elementary school class when they start off with the title of my speech is, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't, you don't want to come across that way. Uh, the topic is clearly identified. You've got a reasonable thesis statement there. I, it sounded to me, it looked to me like you didn't really have a preview. You had a preview of your first point, uh, but not of the whole structure. However. I am, I'm agreeing with Jacob. I thought that was a clever organizational strategy that you had to kind of make the reference to rounding the bases. I think that that's a, a fun idea. But you got to tell us what those bases are as we're setting up. You know, I know that it's, you're not, I'm going, okay, so she's going to talk about this. Did he play second base? Did he play third base? Has he ever been a catcher? What is she talking about? You know, I didn't know what those things are going to be. And I think that that's where you needed to say, so we're going to run the bases first by looking at his early, you know, career before he got to professional baseball. Second, with his debut with the Angels. Third, the success he's had in the last few years. And finally, we're going to look at his status. And yeah. so let's, you know, zip on over to first base here, where we beat out the throw and uh, you know that sort of thing. I think you need a little bit more transition language like that. You had some of it. I think you could elaborate a little bit more. But you need to tell us what those points are. And I didn't really get that in the presentation, so that's a little bit problematic. You've got, uh, the problem, I think, that with the content of the speech is that you've got a lot of stuff that we could find on a baseball card. You know, we've got some stats. We've got some basic uh, information. Uh, when he was born, when he debuted in the team. Why, why is that interesting? You know, you've got to tell us why there's something about that that's different and unique. Uh, why should we be intrigued by it? Uh, it's not that that information is bad, it's good, and it should be part of the speech. But to me, the way it came across is that's all that there was in the speech is kind of a summary of his accomplishments. And if you were you know, inducting him into the Hall of Fame, I guess that you know, listing all of those accomplishments would be the first thing that you would do, but it wouldn't be a very strong induction because it doesn't make a, com a connection with the audience the way that you sounded like you were going to do right at the very beginning. And so I think that you needed to fill that in a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I, I like the idea of the transitions that you had there. Obviously, you had a little bit of trouble with the timing on them. That's something that takes a little bit of practice. And you also have to set that in uh, your PowerPoint. And you, know, you can have them come in faster if you want. Uh, it's not. It's not the computer that's running slow, it's just the way they were programmed in the PowerPoint. So they can come in quicker, and I think that that probably is what you needed to do. That's just a little technical glitch that's going on there. It wasn't a big deal. Um, like I said, the problem I think on some of the slides is that they're just bits and pieces of data. Like I said, we're looking at the back of a baseball card here, and I didn't get any bubble gum to go along with it, so I'm a little deprived. Do they still do that? Do they put bubble gum in the baseball cards? They don't do that, do they? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Old, old, old guy, old guy story. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to agree with Jacob also about the delivery. You need to project your voice. It, whenever you get uncertain, you just drop your voice a little bit more, and that'll be something that you want to work on. We'll, we'll talk about that on the next assignment. All right, thank you.